Hi, I am Jessica with College Bound Review, and I'm going to demonstrate a lesson on SAT and ACT writing in English sections. This lesson will model the type of stories and questions you'll find on both the ACT and the SAT exams. On the SAT, it's section one, which is called the writing and language test, and on the ACT, it's section two, which is called the English test. You all find a series of stories, such as the one that I'm about to show you, with questions testing your editing skills regarding grammar, punctuation, proper word choice, sentence structure, and organization. So now let's take a look at a sample story, which is about Ivy League universities. Please pause the video until you finish reading the passage. You can scroll down or up using the buttons to the left. When you're done, press play. Great, so let's take a closer look at the passage. So as with all passages that appear on the ACT and SAT, you will frequently be asked to fix either glaring grammatical mistakes or awkward expressions. So let's take a look, for instance, at the first sentence of paragraph two, which says, all of these institutions are extremely competitive in the admissions process. All brag of close to 100% graduation rates, and all have a legion of highly successful alumni. And the question asks you, which choice best reduces redundancy in a sentence without altering its meaning? So why don't you use your knowledge and make a guess, and uh, when you're done, we'll go to the next one. Great, so you should have made a guess, so let's check out the correct answer. The correct answer is C. All of these institutions are extremely competitive, brag of close to 100% graduation rates, and have a legion of highly successful alumni. So let's try to understand why this is the correct answer. For both the ACT and the SAT, choice A is frequently going to be no change. So if you're a student taking a test, you shouldn't have to spend any additional time trying to contemplate this option since it's just a sentence the way it is. Now, when you read the sentence to yourself, it should be a mouthful. You should see that there's a, lo uh, there's a lot of redundancy in the sentence, which means we have to pick one of the alternative options. So let's take a look at choice B. It says close to 100% graduation rates, a legion of highly successful alumni, and extremely competitive admission processes are possessions of these institutions. So the sentence is good about here, when we see the phrase are possessions of these. And you should definitely see right here that this is something extremely awkward. So let's eliminate this option. Now let's look at option C. All of these institutions are extremely competitive, brag of close to 100% graduation rates, and have a legion of highly successful alumni. So that sounds like a decent option, so we'll keep that in, and let's look at the last one. All of these institutions, which being extremely competitive in the admissions process, in, in admissions and brag of close to 100% graduation rates, all have a legion of highly successful alumni. So when we read about this, it's all good, except we see another case of redundancy here. All have, you see, all these was already said in the beginning. So our correct answer is indeed C. It gives the best concision without changing the meaning of the sentence. Let's look at, let's take a look at the next question. Now this is a phrase that occurs in a later, in a later paragraph. And it says, uh, and it describes an aspect of Harvard. Um, Harvard has a lot of athletes, uh, which is the most of any Division I school. And the question asks you, at this point, the author is considering adding the following phrase. The highest level of uh, intercollegiate athletics in the United States should the phrase be added. So for those of you taking the exam, um, you know that the sentence is probably going to be added here. If you refer back to the passage, that's where the little number pops up. It says two. So why don't you also make an educated uh, guess, and then we will take a look at the question and the answers. Great. So the correct answer is B. 
With these, either you delete or you don't delete questions. The first thing that you should do is determine whether the phrase should be added or not. And in this particular instance, um, your first instinct should be, yes, it needs to be added. So that jots down our options to these two. And the reason that it should be added, well, is it to provide a better transition or is it to explain a term that audiences may not be familiar with? So I understand that for many of you, if you do sports, Division I should be a term that you're very familiar with. But do keep in mind that some of the other readers may not be as familiar with Division I as you are. And so having a phrase that explains a term that came up previously that's a little bit technical is definitely an asset in writing. And hence, it should be added. Uh, for these two options, C and D, C says it detracts from the main idea of the paragraph. Not really. This is not such a long sentence, and it doesn't really stray off to talk about intercollegiate athletics. And D it distorts the organization of the passage. Again, not really. Uh, the paragraph transitions very quickly to talking about Yale in the next paragraph, so it does not, in fact, distort the organization. Let's take a, take a look at the next question. This occurs in a latter paragraph, in a later paragraph, and uh, it's a paragraph that talks about Columbia. And it says the core curriculum includes study of such classics as Homer's Iliad and Plato's Republic. When you read this, this should instantly ring a bell. Such classics is a little bit awkward of a phrase to say, and it is grammatically incorrect. So for this one, why don't we try to pick uh, which answer is the best revision of that little phrase. And we'll take a look. Great. The answer is indeed classic such. So the best way to handle these questions is you just plug in all the answer choices and see which one sounds the best in the phrase. So you can say includes a study of such classics like as. That doesn't sound quite right. Classics such as. Such as. And that sounds a lot better, right? So really what you should have done here is just swap the two words. Okay, very good. Let's take a look at the next question. And this is a sentence that describes the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, particularly in business, in parentheses, hosting the world-renowned Wharton School of Business. And the question asks you which of the following is the best revision of the sentence. So again, make your educated guess, and we'll take a look. So indeed, the correct answer is D, in business, hosting the world-renowned Wharton School. So whenever you're asked to revise a sentence, the first thing that should come up to your mind is, is there something grammatically incorrect with the sentence? And in this case, there is. If you look at the, world, the word world-renowned, you know that the correct expression is not really world-renowned. This is a noun, and we're looking for an adjective. So what you should say is world-renowned. And also, parentheses is not the most formal way of writing uh, when it comes to professional articles. And we can definitely rephrase the punctuation here to make it a little bit more fluid. So the best way, and oftentimes the best way is the most concise way, is choice D, in business, hosting the world-renowned Wharton School. All right, let's take a look at the next question. This is a paragraph that discusses Brown. It says in Brown, students often take the option of independent study projects, taking courses that they construct primarily by themselves. So again, take an educated guess of what your answer should be, and we'll take a look. And indeed, the answer, the correct answer should be C. Uh, what's missing here is a transition, uh, sorry, a, conjunct a conjunction. The reason that we don't need a comma here is because these are not independent clauses. Um, uh, independent study projects that you do with a group is different than courses that you construct primarily by yourselves. And thus, we need to make sure that this idea is well conveyed and we need a conjunction here. All right, let's take a look at the next question. 
All right, so this is a sentence, and it says at the end of that, the author is considering adding the following sentence. Across colleges in America, students join sororities, fraternities, and identity groups to have a good social life. Should this sentence be added? Make your choice, and let's take a look. The correct answer is no, it should not be added. So also this sentence does talk about, the sentence before that relates to Cornell does talk about social life. Keep in mind that the main passage, the main idea of this passage and this paragraph is about Cornell and some of the uh, good aspects of this college. And so talking about student life, such as joining sororities, fraternities, and identity groups doesn't quite fit into that picture. So again, our instinct is to first determine whether it should be put in there or not, and our instinct should be, no, it shouldn't be put in there. It does detract from the main idea of the paragraph, and in fact, it really has little to do with the passage as a whole. So C is our correct answer. All right, let's take a look at another question. It says, to improve logic in the passage, the final paragraph should be either left where it is, or B, move before paragraph two, or C, move before paragraph six, or D, move before paragraph one. Again, make your selection, take a look. The correct answer is A. The final paragraph here serves as a good conclusion to what the, uh, the, the entire passage has been explaining. The entire passage really gives a broad overview of the eight Ivy League universities, leading up to this conclusion that you, as a student and applicant, perhaps, to these colleges, should look into them and see what these colleges offer you before making a choice that really fits you. So A is the correct answer. It should be left where it is. Uh, on the new SAT, organization is a huge concept that the test makers really want you to focus on. So definitely make sure that you have a good grasp of what makes a logical, a logically coherent and organized essay or any piece of writing. All right, let's take a look at this question. The sentence is, us your college experience will be very different at each of these institutions, and the author is considering deleting this phrase. Should the phrase be deleted? And let's have you make your selection. And the correct answer is A. Yes, the sentence should be deleted because it's a repetition of what's written before. And that's something that you have to practice a lot to be able to see. Uh, if you go to paragraph one, you will see that paragraphs one and two, you'll see that the point was already made that each of these colleges are very unique in themselves, although they are all parts of the Ivy League, members of the Ivy League. And so it is a repetition of what's written before. And also, if you read that whole entire last paragraph to yourself, you will see that it's a little bit redundant. Uh, it does talk about things that has already been said before. And so in order, again, to reduce redundancy, we should take this clause out. Um, I wouldn't quite say it disturbs the logical flow of the paragraph, since the paragraph is saying that you need to make uh, an informed choice. The sentence does not provide new information, and no, the sentence is not needed to complete the main idea of this particular paragraph. So that concludes our little exercise on the passage that we have read. Again, I am Jessica with College Bound Review, and this is a part of a series of lessons on the English and writing sections on both the ACT and SAT. Feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions. Thanks so much for watching, and good luck on your exam.